the biggest force driving the price higher in recent weeks has been sustained signs that markets are in fact tightening. Demand has been stronger, partly as a result of seasonal factors over the summer. People drive more in North America, for example, going on long road trips for vacations. But also we see in the Middle East, a lot more oil, especially crude oil in fact, is directly burned in power plants in many of the biggest Middle Eastern countries, such as Saudi Arabia, to help meet much stronger electricity demand, which is driven by the need for air conditioning. So that's had a real physical underlying side to that. What we've also seen at the same time is that OPEC's efforts to cut back on supplies, as they have been since January at the beginning of this year, alongside allies like Russia, is starting to show some effect. We've seen in the US, for example, that stockpiles of crude oil in particular have fallen sharply over the summer weeks and months. As a result, you're starting to see, okay, maybe after all some of these cuts are actually starting to work and we're starting to see inventory levels come down closer towards, though they're still a long way away, from the five-year average level which OPEC is targeting. At the same time they're being helped, it's a little bit cute that they're going for this five-year average because that's trending upwards over time because we've seen stock levels so high over the last three years. But overall, I mean, essentially we're in a seasonal period of good demand whilst at the same time supplies have been tightening, at least on the OPEC side, where they've cut back. Well, compliance could be better, certainly. I mean, overall, the OPEC group as a whole, their compliance has been close to 100% for much of this mm -hmm. year. But that's largely because Saudi Arabia has cut output further than they had to, at least until recent months. Mm -hmm. So by them reducing out output more, it essentially covered up for what some of the other members weren't doing. They've also been helped out by Venezuela, for example, where output mm -hmm. seems to be in decline, not because of any great you know, compliance on their part, but just because of the problems with their economy and with their oil industry. And also Angola, where they had a, a problems with their economy, but also with trying to do field maintenance mm -hmm. at a certain time. So. Could they do more? Absolutely. They could immediately announce stronger cuts or Saudi Arabia could lead from the front and mm -hmm. say, look, we're going to take another million barrels a day off this market. Will they do it? At the moment, the mood music coming out of OPEC, all the signals they are sending, suggests perhaps not. I mean, Saudi Arabia's own production has stabilised or even risen slightly, partly to meet you know, higher demand in their own countries during the summer months that we discussed earlier, but also it seems that they're not quite prepared just to remove a huge chunk of oil from the market where they might be giving up market share. Well, renewables is an interesting one. Certainly the, the price of renewables has come down markedly. Things like solar, mm -hmm. where you've got mass production of solar panels in China, you've certainly seen the price come down a great, great deal. However, while we talk about you know, the rise of electric cars and so on, especially Tesla is the one that grabs most of the headlines here, where you're seeing large orders, it's still a very small percentage of the overall global motor vehicle fleet. Now, you have countries like France and the UK talking about moving entirely away from petrol and diesel cars by 2040 mm -hmm. under law. Okay, fine. So you get an even bigger use of electric vehicle C, which should displace oil demand, you'd say. One problem with that argument and why not everyone buys that oil demand is going to peak as a result of renewables or electric cars or whatever the sort of disruptive technologies mm -hmm. might be is that motor vehicle or especially passenger vehicle car use for oil demand only makes up about 25% of oil demand. You have jet fuel, you have freight, you have petrochemicals, you have other reasons that's why companies like ExxonMobil and the International Energy Agency believe that we're going to see oil demand continue to grow, especially as vast parts of the world, or vast parts of the global population, come into driving, come into consumption that requires more plastics, more petrochemicals, more freight, more logistics, etc. So it's, it's a tricky one. I mean, certainly it's not a niche view anymore to say that oil demand could peak because mm. of these things, though. Royal Dutch Shell, for example, is, says it pre is preparing for the fact that oil demand will peak. Mm. So there's a real split in the market between these views, but certainly renewables is going to be part of that mix and is going to be a growing part.